So uh, the main key points here are, it should be continuously monitored in all the patients with an artificial airway. Failure to use capnography in patients dependent on an artificial airway contributed to more than 70% uh, of the ICU related airway deaths in the uh, guidelines of fourth national audit uh, program. Education of the medical and the nursing staff is also vital to ensure that adequate understanding and the appropriate interpretation of the capnography trace. Capnography can be used in both intubated and non-intubated patients and it use a wide range, not only limited to the monitoring of the airway. Stuck, I think. So it was started, uh, uh, it's used in 1943 by Luft who developed the principle of capnography that is the carbon dioxide uh, absorbs the infrared radiation of a particular wavelength and later on in uh, 1978, Holland was the first country to adopt capnography as one of the monitor, standard of monitor during anesthesia and uh, uh, after that in 1990, I, ISC has also designated capnography as a desirable standard in anesthesia monitoring and it is a must for undergoing surgery under laparoscopic surgery. We'll have just a few terminologies which are uh, in the uh, capnography. That is, capnography refers to the graphic representation of the CO2 concentration versus the time, that is time capno or the expired volume, that is volume capno during the respiratory cycle. Time Capnograph is a machine that generates a waveform and capnogram is the actual waveform. Capnometry refers to the numerical display of the uh, oxygen concentration in the inspired and the expired air. This is the cap, uh, 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 numerical display of the cap, uh, of the ETCO2. Capnometer is a device that measures uh, and displays the reading. <clears throat> there are different methods to measure the CO2 levels that include infrared Raman uh, mass and a photoacoustic spectro spectrograph. And uh, the other one is the chemical calorimetric analysis. Infrared method is the most widely used method and it is most cost effective. And this technique involves beaming of the intra infrared light through a column of gas mixture. The carbon dioxide within the column that absorbs part of the infrared ray light yields a beam of light with less intense light on the opposite side of the column. So this is uh, just a diagram uh, which I got it from the YouTube. Uh, this is when the carbon dioxide uh, infrared rays is passed because of the carbon dioxide molecules it absorbs and the less beam is less of the infrared rays are de detected here in the detector. So uh, that shows the the level of the uh, carbon dioxide within the sample. Factors that affect the infrared spectroscopy include, uh, spectrography include atmospheric pressure, nitrous oxide, oxygen, water vapor, inhalational agents, and the response time. Increase in the atmospheric pressure results in an increase in the ETCO2 values by increasing the number of the infrared, ray, uh, infrared uh, absorbing the molecules and increasing the intermolecular forces. Raman spectrography uses the principle of Raman scattering for the CO2 measurement. Here, the gas sample is aspirated into an analyzing chamber where the same sample is illuminated by the high intensity monochromatic argon laser beam. And then the light is absorbed by the molecules which are then excited uh, to uh, unstable vibration and rotational energy states. That is Raman scattering. The spectrum of Raman scattering lines can be used to identify the, all the molecules of the uh, all the types of molecules in the gas phase. The Raman scattering technology has been incorporated, uh, incorporated in the newer anesthetic monitors, that is RASCAL monitors, to identify and quantify instantly not only the carbon dioxide and also the other inhalational agents that we use during anesthesia. 
mass spectrography here a sample of gas is aspirated into a high vacuum chamber that is up to 10 to 15 millimeters of mercury and then an electronic beam uh, is passed through that which ionizes and fragments the components of the sample the ion ions are then accelerated by an electrical field and then into the magnetic field the detector plates plate which is on the other end allows the determination of the components of the gas and then for the concentration of each of the component of the gases the mass spectrographies are very expensive and they are too, uh, too bulky to be used on the bedside and uh, they are rarely used at present. For, uh, for photoacoustic spectrography, here the infrared ray energy is applied to the gas and the gas will expand and lead to an increase in the pressure. If the applied pressure is delivered in pulses, the, the gas expansion also will pulsatile and resulting in the pressure fluctuations. If the pulsation's frequency lies within the audible range, an acoustic signal is produced and then is detected by the microphone. The advantages here are higher, more it is higher than the other other infrared spectrography, and it is more accurate and better reliability. Even though it is still not gained the popularity um, the, compared to the other one. Chemical method of uh, carbon dioxide measurement it includes a pH sensitive chemical indicator uh, uh, that is called uh, Easy Cap Two, and it is enclosed in a plastic hosing. It is connected to the gas stream uh, between the ET tube and the circuit. It changes the color when exposed to the carbon dioxide. That is when it is uh, uh, during ins inspiration when the more of, of air and oxygen is there, it shows purple. And with the ex uh, expiration, that at least minimum four percent of carbon dioxide is exposed, it, it changes the color to yellow. It is the detector. So there are two types of capnographs. One is side stream capnograph and the other one is the mainstream capnograph. Here in the side stream capnograph, here we can see that the carbon dioxide sensor is located in the main unit away from the, uh, this is the, um, this is the sensor, uh, which is away from the uh, uh, main unit. A tiny pump aspirates the gas sample from the patient's airway through the long capillary tubing. This is the long capillary tubing and then it aspirates around 150 to 200 ml per minute. <coughs> so uh, it has some advantages and disadvantages. Uh, it allows monitoring uh, even patients with spontaneously breathing and non-intubated patients. Uh, it doesn't require uh, much of uh, sterilization and it is easy to connect to the gas circuit and it is lightweight. Mm -hmm. It is used uh, when the patient is still in a prone position. <clears throat> Some delay in the recording can happen because it is uh, away from the endotracheal tube. Sampling tube obstruction uh, can have can cause a lowered uh, low values. Water vapor can also affect the CO2 concentrations. And uh, the deformity of the uh, capnogram can happen in children due to the dispersion of the gases in the uh, sampling unit because of the low volumes. And it is uh, also using uh, 50 to 100 ml of uh, gases uh, per minute. So this is, uh, it is connected to the uh, CO2 and uh, nasal prongs. So here we can see that it uh, oxygen, I, uh, is a <clears throat> flowed here uh, and then it is aspirated from the CO2. So it can be used in even in the spontaneously breathing patients. This is the connected to the mask. Uh, mainstream capnograph, uh, this is the mainstream capnograph, this is the <clears throat> det, uh, source and the detector. Uh, the quid containing the CO2 sensor is inserted between the breathing circuit and the endotracheal tube, this one. <clears throat> and the infrared uh, passes, uh, infrared rays pass through the respiratory gases and through the infrared detector within the quid. So this is the uh, adapter which we connected uh, between the endotracheal tube and the circuit and this is the detector. <clears throat> to prevent condensation of the water, va water vapor, all the mainstream sensors are heated above the body temperature to about 40 degrees centigrade. That is one of the disadvantages of this which can cause thermal burns if it is not noticed. And advantages are it is faster, has a faster response because it is into the mainstream of the circuit and uh, no sampling pump is required and there is even no uh, wastage of the gases. And uh, 
<clears throat> there is no delay in recording. Disadvantages are it is little heavy, it can cause uh, uh, dragging of the endotracheal tube, it can be displaced, can uh, cause kinking of the endotracheal tube and uh, difficult to use in prone positions and the sensors may get clogged with the secretions but need to be displaced uh, by the disposable ones. Newer versions use disposable sensor windows thereby eliminating the sterilization problem. <clears throat> So the CO2 monitor uh, <coughs> can be qualitative and <coughs> qualitative and quantitative. In quantitative, we use this capnometry and capnography, where we measure the ended tidal carbon dioxide, uh, <coughs> which we measure both the number and the waveform. In qualitative, we measure the range in which the ETCO2 falls, that is 0 to 10 millimeters of mercury or more than 35 millimeters of mercury, that color detector. So this is the qualitative one with the change in the color of the uh, uh, detector. We can see that the uh, CO2 um, is detected or not. <clears throat> Uh, in qualitative capnometric device, it is primarily used just to see whether the endotracheal tube is in place in an uh, out, outside the hospital. Correctly placed, it changes the color. <clears throat> and if it is in the esophagus, uh, remains purple. <clears throat> False negative results also can happen with this because uh, it may take some time for the gastric contents and the things can be empty. And uh, for this, uh, evaluate the color of the device after full six breaths. This allows the CO2 in the stomach to be <clears throat> empty. So we have time capnogram and the volume capnogram that is CO2 versus time and the CO2 versus volume. Uh, in time capnogram, it can be recorded in, at the two speeds that is high speed and the low speed. <coughs> uh, the above one is the high speed which measures the, uh, at 7 millimeters per second and shows the information about each breath and that uh, uh, slow uh, mm, with a slow rate, which is at 0.7 millimeters per second. Uh, some basic physiology like uh, cellular metabolism, not only the respiratory process, uh, this one, and entitled and carbon dioxide, even we can monitor cellular metabolism of the patient, transport of the gases, and the ventilation part just by monitoring the entitled carbon dioxide. This is how the carbon dioxide is uh, at the cellular level, transportation, and then at the um, monitoring level. So normal uh, capnogram, it has got an exhalation of the carbon dioxide from the alveolar uh, to the upper airways and inhalation of the carbon dioxide free gases gives the characteristic shape of the uh, this curve we will discuss. Uh, phase 1, 2, 3 and 4 actually. Uh, phase 1 is the, this is the dead space of the ventilation which begins, uh, shows the beginning of the exhalation and uh, represents the carbon dioxide free gas from the airways and the anatomical and the app uh, apparatus dead space. So this is the phase 2 that is the ascending phase that is early exhalation which shows the rise in the ETCO2 and uh, this consists of the rapid S-shape upswing of on tracing and this is due to the mixing of the dead space gas with the alveolar gas. <coughs> And this is the plateau phase, which is in yellow color, shows the end of the wave of the exhalation contains the highest concentration of the carbon dioxide number seen on the monitor. So phase three consists of the alveolar, which shows carbon dioxide rich gas <coughs> from the alveolar. It also always has a positive slip indicating the rising of the PCO2. Steady uh, excretion of the carbon dioxide into the alveolar. The late emptying of the alveolar with the lower ventilation perfusion ratios and therefore relatively higher PCO2. The normal values are between 35 to 45, which you are already monitoring. And phase four is the descending phase, which was inhalation, in, which suggests the inhalation has begun and the oxygen fills the airway. So the carbon dioxide levels drops to zero. <coughs> we have uh, that. Um, uh, this alpha angle and the beta angle, which also suggests uh, the abnormality in the uh, phase 2 and phase 3. Normally, it is between the 100 and 110 degrees. Indirect uh, detector of the ventilation perfusion, status of the lung. Any airway obstruction or chronic bronchitis causes an increase in the slope and the larger angle of this, which we I'll show you some uh, figures in the later slides. 
the beta angle that is between the stage 3 and the stage 4 which is normally around 90 degrees and uh, this increases uh, the uh, increase in the beta angle uh, suggests uh, rebreathing a uh, time capnogram has advantages of, of uh, as it is simple and convenient, it can be even monitored for non-intubated patients and uh, <clears throat> dynamics of in, uh, also monitors the dynamic of inspiration and the expiration. Disadvantages are it is a poor estimation of the ventilation perfusion state uh, status as compared to the volume capnography and it can be used to estimate the components of the not used to measure the components which has the advantages with the time capnogram and uh, also does not uh, uh, distinguish the end of the expression and from the beginning of the inspiration so this is the capnography uh, this is a uh, <clears throat> versus time this is in uh, expiration alveolar dead space and this is the inspiration only three phases will be there here and then we can see the calculate the alveolar dead space and the anatomical dead space so this is the vol volume capnogram here we can uh, measure the area under the graph effective alveolar ventilation and this is the alveolar dead space and the anatomical dead space that is uh, the physiological dead space together so we we uh, the physiological dead space versus the anatomical dead space we can measure by uh, pseo2 minus pseo2 upon pseo2 The area under the CO2 curve that is an effective alveolar ventilation, the area above the curve and before the uh, CO2 curve that shows the physiological dead space and there is no inspiratory segment in the volume capnogram. The expiratory segment is divided only to 1, 2, 3 and, and as versus uh, in the uh, <clears throat> time capnogram it has four phases. Uh, phase three of the volume capnogram is better representation of the volume state uh, VQ mismatch status of the lung than the stage three of the time capnogram. The five characters we have to see always whenever we see the capnography: frequency, rhythm, height, uh, shape, and the baseline. So. Uh, the number value, ETCO2 value, the shape of the waveform and the PACO2 minus the ETCO2 difference helps to know the ventilation perfusion status of the particular patient. Uh, usually the gradient is only between 2 to 5 millimeters of mercury. It can increase with the increase in age in patients with emphysema, low cardiac output status, hypovolemia uh, uh, or pulmonary embolism. And it can decrease in patients with uh, pregnancy and children because of the increased respiratory. <clears throat> so here you can see that normal value is 2 to 5. It can increase whenever there is an uh, <clears throat> increase in the alveolar despite the value can go up. Uh, even it can sometimes be negative in patients with low frequency tidal volume ventilation, pregnant patients, or if they are coming off from the cardiac bypass, you have to rule out the other causes for if at all there is a negative uh, difference. Uh, it can be maybe sometimes machine errors, rebreathing, or inadvertent in in addition of the carbon dioxide to the inspiratory gases. So increase in the slope. Here we can see that the increase in the slope. Hmm? This can happen uh, <clears throat> during uh, airway obstruction, uh, which takes longer time for the expiration. So capnography and CPR helps to gauge the effectiveness of the CPR and also to know the return of the uh, resuscitation. Here we can see that there is a uh, fall in the ETCO2 and slowly with the uh, ROSC, there will be increase in the and entitled carbon dioxide. So some of the other capnogram waveforms here will just have a fast uh, um, review. Uh, this is a normal ETCO2. Once the, there is a hyperventilation with increased rate, and uh, this one we can see that the ETCO2 values are coming down. And with the hyperventilation, the ETCO2 is going up. It is more than the 45 or 50. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, 
So here we can see that there is a slow increase in the ETCO2, which shows that it is hypoventilation. Um, and uh, this is the um, slowly decrease in the ETCO2 value. We can see here it shows the hypoventilation. Gradual decrease in the height of the catenogram baseline remaining zero. So increasing ETCO2 level, it can have, have because of the decrease in the rate or the tidal volume or increase in the metabolic rate or rise, rapid rise in the temperature or in cases of malignant hyperthermia. Decreasing ATCO2 can happen in patients with uh, increase in the respiratory rate, tidal, uh, tidal volume or decrease in the metabolic rate and the hyperthermia. Rebreathing, here you can see that the ETCO2 it is not touching the baseline and uh, this can be because of the faulty expiratory valve, inadequate inspiratory flows or malfunction of the carbon dioxide absorbent system in, in uh, anesthesia patients, anesthetic patients and it or it can be because of the partial rebreathing uh, circuit or inefficient expiratory time. So in cases of airway obstruction, uh, Phase two and the phase three are prolonged. Here you can see the phase two and phase three are prolonged with an increase in the alpha angle. Uh, shows uh, that a particular uh, um, word is that shark fin uh, capnogram. It can happen in uh, airway obstruction in patients with asthma. And uh, <clears throat> we have to rule out the other causes. Here you can just nice video I have. They are during the bronchospasm and with the relief in the bronchodilators are given, it shows the change in the uh, graph. So this is the curare effect, which is coming when the patient is coming out of the mus uh, muscle act, muscle relaxant action and the spontaneous ventilation is returned. Depth of the cleft is inversely proportional to the degree of the drug activity and uh, position is fairly constant on the patient, but does not necessarily represent each and every breath. So, if in cases of esophageal ventilation, uh, we can see that after a few breaths, maybe four to six breaths, the um, graph is coming down and it falls to zero. Here, yeah, cardiac oscillations can be seen here in thin patients and in patients with uh, uh, in patient children. Um, <coughs> Sampling, if there is a leak in the sampling effect or it is loosely connected, we can see there is a beak in the uh, waveform. There is a gradual rise in the uh, height on uh, baseline and also the height of the waveform, which shows that there is a uh, exhausted soda line or it is rebreathing. <clears throat> Inspiratory malfunction, we can see that the phase uh, four, it is prolonged, it is taking more time. So we have to check for the <clears throat> malfunction. <clears throat> So this is the expiratory valve stuck. There is, it is not touching the baseline and almost it is like rebreathing. So <clears throat> With the uh, spontaneous ventilation, we can see the graph like this and with the uh, effect of the muscle relaxant, the, the waveform changes. <clears throat> So in patients with lung transplantation, because of the uh, only one lung transplantation, there is a change in the waveform which shows uh, this type of waveform. In kyphoscoliosis, where the um, oxy, uh, the uh, ventilation perfusion is occurring at the different time, the waveform will be different like this. There is a problem with the sampling tube or leak or something, the waveform is like this. So in patients with the pulmonary, pulmonary embolism, we can detect like this. Suddenly there is a uh, <coughs> yeah, <coughs> fall in the ETCO2, <coughs> rapid decrease in the ETCO2 in the absence of changes in the blood pressure or the central venous pressure and the heart rate indicates air embolism without the systemic uh, hemodynamic consequences. Uh, as the size of the air embolism increases, the reduction in the cardiac output occurs, which further decreases the ETCO2 measurement. And a re reduced CO2 <coughs> cardiac output by itself can decrease the uh, entitled carbon dioxide. 
So with the car decrease in the cardiac output, we can see that the CO2 is also lower. So for any appropriate um, measurement of the ETCO2, yeah, all the things we have to assess. Decrease in the cardiac output can lead to decrease in the uh, uh, ETCO2 value. Volume capnogram uh, can be plotted against the expired volume during the expiratory cycle and it is termed as a volume capnogram. Unlike, uh, the time, uh, unlike in the time capnogram, it has only the uh, only the expiratory segment, no inspiratory segment. This already I have discussed before. Advantages are uh, volume of the carbon dioxide exhaled per month can be measured. It has significant changes in the morphology of the um, expired uh, wave form can be detected and that are not seen in the time gap. <clears throat> Estimation of the dead space can be made, uh, done. Uh, volume capnogram in the ICU can be used to, to determine the optimal PEEP level for the ARDS patients, thus helping the optimization of the uh, inspiratory oxygen and also the ventilatory cell settings. So in patients with asthma, uh, there is a peaking that is uh, already have discussed. And even he says that in diabetes, ETCO2 can aid in differentiating between also hypoglycemia and the hyperglycemia. Uh, uh, hyperglyc hypoglycemic patient is uh, likely to have a relatively normal rate and the respiration. Just <clears throat> So low ETCO2 can help to uh, detect the presence of significant ketoacidosis who has the increase in the respiratory rate. So endobronchial intubation may not result in the characteristic waveform of, it, of the ETCO2. And uh, this uh, Combination of the capnometer results in the sudden elevation of the contamination can also cause an elevation of the, from the baseline. And uh, com when coming to the critical care, uh, nowadays it is uh, suggested that even training of the uh, ICU staff and the junior doctors is very important by this diagrammatic presentation. And uh, this is the uh, square waveform. It has got a top head. It is good. And it is suggests that it is clear and unobstructed airway. And uh, this is the ascot hat, which is OK. But indicates there is a spasm in the air, obstructed airway, partially obstructed. So we have to intervene. So when it is a uh, Don's hat or a bad hat, or it is a, like a um, triangular shape, it indicates there is a significantly, which needs intervention. No hat, no, very bad, and uh, indicates the dislodgement or the displacement of the endotracheal tube or the tracheostomy tube, and uh, may also suggest the esophageal intubation or the lack of ventilation. This is how the ICU staff needs to be trained. So capnography during intubation and for the peri period of patient remains dependent on the artificial uh, airway was cited as being the single most effective way of reducing the morbidity and mortality uh, surrounding the airway and the ventilator management. Fogging, as we all think that fogging is an important thing, we, confirmation of the uh, tube placement, even it has shown that only in 83% of the patients, um, it can be detected. Um, uh, it uh, and the chest wall movement can be produced both correctly and placed endotracheal tubes and those incorrectly placed in the esophagus. In one study, uh, they have shown that using breath sounds as a sole means of verification, incorrectly identified tracheal tube location in 16% of the cases. So the diagnosis of esophageal intubation using capnography is not always again straightforward and that has to be associated with the um, flat line trace. However, CO2 can be present in gas. So we have to wait for the five to six breaths for the confirmation of the uh, correct placement of the endotracheal tube about the tracheostomy tube. In one study, uh, in the ideal appropriating normal conditions using breath sounds as the sole means of verification, uh, they uh, incorrectly identified the tracheal tube in 16% of the cases. Uh, <clears throat> I think this is just a repetition. Uh, it also helps to assess the tracheal tube and the tracheostomy patency and the position. It gives a real time, continuous and at a glance information about the airway patency. Change in the capnography waveform should alert the staff uh, to potential problems with the airway and trigger an immediate assessment and the response. So capnography has a first a fast and response time with the changes in the capnographic wave form usually seen before the desaturation. 
so it also helps to uh, it is your to monitoring also helps the adequacy of the ventilatory support monitors uh, the adequacy of the mechanical ventilation with the capnography it is also used to detect hypercapnia due to hyperventilation hypocapnia due to hyperven uh, and also be useful when the patients are being weaned from the ventilatory support <clears throat> it also uh, helps about the efficacy of the ventilation and ventilation perfusion ratio can be major uh, uh but at the same time we have to monitor the psco2 maybe sometimes or uh, during uh, it is uh, used it's used during percutaneous stricostomy is also there it helps to improve the safety when performing uh, the procedure uh, and the confirmation that tracheostomy is correctly placed at the end of the procedure uh, capnography monitoring is likely to be become the uh, standard of care for this potentially high risk procedure most of the times when we struggle for during the procedure <clears throat> at the same time monitoring of etco2 is also essential in patients with raised intracranial pressure as we all know that cerebral blood flow varies according uh, considerably depending upon the psco2 in the uh, blood and if the poc psco2 rises the cerebral blood flow rises which can increase the intracranial pressure and at the same time the low psco2 causes vasoconstriction which decreases the cerebral blood flow again which is not uh, <clears throat> recommended in the icu patients it helps to recognize any spasm in the icu patients and the intervention and the response with the bronchodilator therapy estimation of the cardiac output can also be done uh, provided the ventilation remains the constant and it is used to provides the continuous strength of pulmonary blood flow and their uh, estimation of the cardiac output number of studies have shown that it is can be useful in estimating change in the change in the cardiac output and changes in the it is to in response to fluid resp uh, fluid therapy uh, that is pa or passive like therapy pla has also been studied however uh, uh, <clears throat> Uh, it is what the trice is very minimal meaning that it should not be used alone it can be used with the uh, cardiac output monitoring mm, you it is also used during cardiac output because the patency of the airway at the same time the ventilation and also the assess uh, the adequacy of the chest compression and also the return of the spontaneous uh, circulation and also we can prognosticate during the cpr the other uses are volumetric capnography uh, made, uh, that is vcap measures the kinetics of car carbon dioxide elimination on the breath by breath basis and uh, it can also be used simultaneously a major uh, tidal volume and the pneumato pneumotachograph <coughs> And at the same time, now the latest ventilators have that indirect calorimetry, the oxygen consumption and the um, carbon dioxide uh, um, produced can be used to calculate the nutrition requirement of a particular patient. Uh, volumetric capnography can also be used to measure the physiological and the dead spit and also assess any response to change in the ventilation. A volumetric capnogram contains a physiological information about again the metabolism that the total oxygen consumption and the cord of carbon dioxide within the lungs and uh, it is also a clinical tool to measure the dead space. I think this is just a repetition. It also helps to uh, see the change in either the tidal volume or the application of the PEEP. Mm. Even the pulmonary blood flow can be measured through this. It enables the rapid detection in cardiac output and intravascular volume responsiveness. It was also used to differentiate deficits in the lung perfusion as a result of embolic uh, events that is pulmonary embolism or the central hypovolemia. Uh, and at the same time, it is also this ETC2 monitoring is also required and the must when we are transferring the patients from uh, in within the hospital for uh, radiological uh, procedures or from shift from one hospital to the other hospital which can detect the displacement of the endotracheal tube during uh, shifting and uh, early resuscitation. Recent advances are this is the latest micro stream technology which uses the side stream capnography and this allows minimal uh, gas aspiration that is only up to 50 ml. The other one which you are infrared that was also using the uh, 50 to 100 ml. It minimizes the dispersion of the gases in the sampling tubes and it is less likely to aspirate the condensed water and secretions. 
uh, despite the low flow, the response is good here and uh, uh, ETCO2 values obtained with this monitor accurately predict the PSCO2 values in adults. And also it can be very useful in pediatric patients where the volume we are using is very less. Uh, <clears throat> uh, mainstream technology in the newer developments uh, here uh, because of the uh, required because of the heavy weight bulk size and facial bones as a result with the our uh, mass spectrography this is the capno stat it is a new solid state mainstream inspiration it is a has a sensor which is small and lightweight it provides a variety of uh, airway uh, adapters to monitor uh, the adult pediatric and even in the neonatal patients so low flow, it is a, a new side stream sensor. It also samples only 50 ml of uh, gas and has a new uh, external sample cell, um, which is attached to the patient interface rather than the uh, house, uh, host inside the monitor. Uh, this is designed, uh, this design eliminates the need for the respiratory gases sample to be pulled or then any suction uh, is required uh, inside the infrared, um, internal infrared measurement and eliminates the associated contamination uh, or complications uh, as experienced in the older versions. This is a miniature mainstream multicast monitor which uses again infrared technique for measurement and it also analyzes nitrous oxide and the other uh, uh, inhalational anesthetics and the response time is uh, very less compared to the uh, other ones two to three times faster than the other. Uh, <clears throat> The recent applications is this is a non-invasive measure, measurement and it is used in the NICO that uh, NICO cardiopulmonary management unit provides the continual cardiac output monitoring and this helps to breath to breath elimination of the uh, uh, carbon dioxide elimination during resuscitation. So uh, the future is the like capnography has uh, Conclusion to conclude, capnography has a multiple uses in the IC, not only the patents uh, or and uh, respiration, it also has a significant implement safety and quality of care. Uh, so, uh, some countries recommend uh, to use uh, for all the ICU patients with the artificial airway, either invasive or non-invasive. And uh, in addition to measuring the patency, assessing the patency and the position of the endotracheal tube, it also gives additional information regarding the respiratory cardiac function and the metabolic function the patient even in both the ventilated and the non-ventilated patients and uh, it should be made mandatory for the patients in anesthesia and also in the um, ICU patients with artificial air. Thank you. Thank you Mandula madam for a nice presentation explaining the uh, importance of ETCO2 uh, Capnography in both in anesthesia and uh, critical care practice. I invite uh, questions from the audience. Everybody Hello? knows it, David. No, not like that. Uh, everybody knows, but nobody will use. Uh, but uh, uh, the main uh, advantage, benefits of monitoring uh, this in ICU, particularly. Huh. From my side, at what level of ETCO2 is required to say that uh, the quality of CPR is good. Uh, at minimum of 20 millimeters of uh, 20, it is out of 20 minimum is required to see that there is a return of the spontaneous circulation. No, not for return of the spontaneous. Mm. To say the high quality CPR, mm. what is the minimum value is required? High quality that is minimum is 20 only, no? No, no. Not 20. How much? There is a, as per uh, AHA guidelines, uh, to say that high quality CPR, the two things to be monitored in ICU. One is uh, arterial blood pressure. Arter uh, uh, diastolic arterial pressure, uh, blood pressure should be around 30, more than 30 millimeters of mercury. And ETCOT must be more than 10 millimeters of mercury. Okay. Uh, 10 is sufficient. To say that quality of CPR is good, Mm -hmm. Less than these levels, we have to increase your quality of CPR. Okay. Yeah, that's... That may be recoil, that may be compression. Ah, yeah, whatever it is. All five steps of high quality CPR. What are the five steps of high quality CPR, David, sir? 
అదే సార్ పుష్ట్ పుష్పాస్ట్ ఈ విధ ఎలవ్ ద టైమ్ టు రీకాయిల్ అండ్ డెప్త్ ఈస్ అరౌండ్ టూ పాయింట్ ఫైవ్ ఇంచెస్ రేట్ అట్ ది అట్ మినిమమ్ అట్ ది రేట్ ఆఫ్ వన్ వన్ హండ్రెడ్ టు వన్ ట్వంటీ పర్ మినిట్ మానిటరింగ్ పర్టికులర్లీనింగ్ పేషెంట్స్ బికాస్ వాట్ ఐ అబ్జర్వ్ ఇన్ కోవిడ్ టైమ్ ఈటీసీ ఓటు ఇప్పుడు దాని ప్రోనింగ్ పేషెంట్స్ మానిటరింగ్ ఈటీసీ ఓటు ఇస్ అరౌండ్ వాట్ ఎవర్ వెంటిలేషన్ పారామీటర్స్ ఈ పుట్ ఈజ్ అరౌండ్ సెవెంటీ అబౌవ్ ఎయిటీ లైక్ దట్ వన్ షుడ్ టేక్ ద ఏబిజీ ద పిఎస్ఈ ఓటు మైనస్ ఈటీసీ ఓటు ద గ్రేడియంట్ ఈజ్ మినిమమ్ మోర్ దాన్ థర్టీ ఆర్ ఫార్టీ టేక్ ఎయిటీ ద ఈటీసీ ఓటు a pco to might be around 120 or 110 like that so that indicates how much dead ventilation dead space ventilation is there in a uh, covid patients in uh, usually uh-huh. what uh, we do is uh, patients who are having a copd patients on a ventilator having a copd and uh, specifically they need neuro patients are there because these are the patients where we need to have a closed watch like pco to neuro patients and ards patients i have mentioned and uh-huh. especially the patients who we are weaning in the pressure support ventilation to because we again to avoid uh, frequent abgs we use the ctc o2 so that the um, uh, accumulation is there or not or the, how the patient is responding we will be monitoring the patient yeah any, any question any, from audience any, ఎన్ని ఈటీసీ ఓట్లు ఉన్నాయి మీ దగ్గర డేవిడ్ శ్రీనివాస్ సార్ మన దగ్గర రెండు ఉన్నాయి సార్ మా దగ్గర మూడు ఉన్నాయి సార్ మూడుట్లో కోవిడ్ టైంలో ఒకటి పోయింది డ్యూరింగ్ షిఫ్టింగ్ ఆఫ్ దీస్ పేషెంట్స్ అండ్ ఐసీయూస్ వి లాస్ట్ వన్ బికాస్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఇట్ ఈస్ స్మాల్ వన్ మెయిన్ స్ట్రీమ్ సో యూ సార్ అనదర్ థింగ్ లైక్ ఇవన్నీ డిస్కనెక్షన్ ఆఫ్ ది ఈసీజ్ లీడ్స్ యూ గెట్ స్ట్రేట్ లైన్ లైక్ దట్ డిస్కనెక్షన్ ఆర్ ఈవెన్ ఇఫ్ దెర్ ఇస్ నో క్యాలిబ్రేషన్ నాట్ డన్ దట్ ఆల్సో షో స్ట్రేట్ లైన్ దట్ టైమ్ సిస్టర్ మే కాల్ దట్ స్ట్రేట్ లైన్ పేషెంట్ మైట్ బి హ్యావింగ్ కార్డియక్ అరెస్ట్ సో వన్స్ ఇఫ్ పేషెంట్ హ్యావింగ్ స్ట్రేట్ లైన్ ఆఫ్ ఈటీసీ ఓటు first you see check the pulse when there is no cardiac arrest then you can call the technician and uh, see the calibration and do the calibration can you check the same other way also yes sir when the ecg is not coming it's coming so can you show the etc what it's coming and then you can say that no patient is ah, not yeah. correct when ecg is there but ecg is there and in case of uh, uh, cardiac arrest also uh, this one electromechanical dissociation that time but it is it ecg will be there but there is no pulse you may miss uh, that also in case of uh, pneumothorax you will get the normal ecg with cardiac arrest so pulseless why if you have pulse oximeter yeah. you will see the plet yes madam if you see the plet there is definitely circulation uh, even to peripheries otherwise you won't get plet also right yeah, yeah. like septic shock patients monna vachinappudu ee maalu pci vote chaala takku undu circulation takku undu appudu etc vote petti kuda appudu kuda cheyachu kada yes sir in uh, the, that also etc o2 will be low because of perfusion also is low to the lung pulmonary perfusion also is low because of shock 
So once you improve the perfusion, improve the blood pressure, automatically ETCO2 will increase. I that case, I think the volumetric uh, uses sir. in ICU, like for example, if that uh, if that is not good, uh, out of like volumetric is better, sir. In that case, huh? volumetric capnography is better in that case. It give both the physiological and anatomical dead space. Volumetric container. You show no volumetric. Yes, I'll just yeah. show. Show the uh, that one graph. It will clearly show that uh, advantage uh, over uh, qualitative. Yeah, this one. Exactly, this picture will show on the monitor, uh, Manjula. This one. The colors, colors will display like this in volumetric. I, I don't know. <laughs> I Anybody think seen volumetric? No, no, I have not seen. Uh, anybody in the group? So both you can identify in case of uh, uh, in the perfusion ventilation mismatch due to hypotension or uh, whether it is uh, anatomical dead piece or physiological dead piece. It's very good for ICU. Maybe cost is too high. I don't know. Yeah, anybody has seen? Anna, Jekina. Main problem is that the car can't go because the nasal planks are too big. The out of ventilation or non ventilation is too big. Are you kidding? The COPD patient, sir. That is also available. I have seen in the conferences. Ah, conference that man, our hospital only regular ward to Jairam. Aha. If you go four or five years back, that is easy to take. That is, man, we have to connect them. అంటే అక్కడ ఇటు చోట లేకుండా ఇంటిబేషన్ డేంజర్ అవుతుంది ఓటీలో అప్పుడు మనకు ప్రాబ్లం వచ్చిన తర్వాత నుంచి మనం కొనిపెట్టామట అక్కడ మెట్రానిక్ పడి తీసుకొచ్చి కూడా ఒకసారి వాడాం ఇక్కడ మెడికల్ ఎలా ఉంటుందో చూద్దామని పేషెంట్స్ కి లాంగ్ టర్మ్ వీనింగ్ డిఫికల్ట్ ఉన్న వాళ్ళకి మళ్ళీ అవసరమా లేదా ప్రతిసారి ఏబిజి చేయకుండా ఏంటి ఎక్స్ట్రేట్ చేసిన తర్వాత అది పెట్టి చెక్ చేసే వాళ్ళం ఎన్ఐవిలో లేకపోతే నార్మల్ ఆక్సిజన్ మాస్క్ అయినా సరే ఇదా సార్ ఇదే So that is connected to the nasal prongs. Ah, connected to nasal prongs. Mm. Now, can we use it for a side stream for a ET tube, Anjala? Side stream we are using for endotracheal tube, no? Which is also a side stream, no? Yeah, but side it is. Side stream, but yeah. it is where? Oh, you can connect to it, right? Ah, connect to it, right? Connect to it, right? Connect to it, right? I mean, mask club, I'll put it on the mask club. Ah, filter, okay. Filter, there is a port for ETCO2 connection. Hmm. Yeah, to connect this one to the filter. Yes, yes. There is a male-female connection, right? Yes, and you can create an opening for your school, sir. There is a male-female connection, right? Maybe they will give another port for that. Hello? Sir. Size of ET tube, right? 14 or 16, right? The size of the size of the connection. But you need that much size of to connect, kada. For mainstream, sir. No, for ET tube or any connections, you need connections, kada. Sir, but I think we can use it for all the endotracheal tubes, sir. Ah, for endotracheal tube, we'll connect the filter, no? Ah, that's the filter. Goes, there is a there is a one port. Sometimes that port will be disconnected, no? That cap will be dislodged mm -hmm. and uh, get leaked. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that is that is for ETCO2 monitoring. Mm. Sampling. That you can uh, connect this one, or maybe you can ask uh, an another uh, port. Company will supply maybe to another port two, three different varieties. One is for mask, one is for nasal prongs, one is for this uh, filter connector. This is side stream main uh, technology. Side stream. Yes, sir. Now, any questions, Satish? Madam, Rani, Madam, Mohan Rao, it unders where Akshay Shilpe, right? Yes, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, David, sir. David. Maybe. Ah. So it is able to uh, more and more. Uh, they are trying to use in intensive care, especially to assess the cardiac output and uh, dead space ventilation, especially in ARDS. 
and uh, during the fluid resuscitation the uh, had to had to validate this uh, in these three areas nice presentation madam thank you david madam ards ventilator valiki repeated ga abgs chestam kada dan badalu మంచిలో What is that? FeCO two, FeCO two, something else. Just check, no. I just from slides here and there I got. What is the FeCO two and the FeCO two in that? Some they showed some advantages. Slide. This one. No, no, no. No. The fraction, go, go. Another. Before this, it has come. Okay, next. Because, next. I think that is volumetric. Next. Sir, I think at the fraction of expired air, that is carbon dioxide, sir, FeCO2. Huh? FeCO2 and the fraction of expired air, that is carbon dioxide. Ah, this, this, this one. one. No, no, no. Back, back, back slide. Yeah, this one. Vd by Vt. No, this one. And the the dead, space, that space. Uh, dead space versus tidal volume is equal to that partial pressure of carbon dioxide minus the end tidal carbon dioxide. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah, different yeah, books yeah. are using different thing, no? That is PaCO2. Uh, this is pseo2 this is etco2 or divided by again the pseo2 not fseo2 no it is some books given like just copied from other slides also. what is fpa then books are so partial, they... no it is partial pressure of car pseo2 arterial no, no. ff what is F? i don't know no, i don't think it's pressure madam it's volume only ah uh, in because we are estimating the dead space in volume no madam FeCO2 is fraction of alveolar carbon uh, the expired uh-huh. air which Achha, is carbon dioxide. Ah, uh, uh, it volume, is volume. Uh, entire entire thing is volume only. Fraction of carbon dioxide with uh, in the expired air no, minus entire entire carbon. Then how do you calculate the fraction? Sir, the volume capnograph loss is one kind of. This in the only volume... calculate just the run count only. Volume capnography also she showed that. Uh, the alveolar dead space is more than 5 to 7 more than 7 millimeters mm. of mercury then it is increasing the dead space ventilation so mm. the, she is not mentioned there also fsco2 there she mentioned in psco2 only not fsco2 so i want to ask uh, so there also she is written psco2 minus etco2 is the uh, gradient if it is more than 7 that space ventilation is there but what is if i want is... to know what is the fsco2 okay okay david will clarify it next <laughs> oh it is there in the same slide no the... I just see oh, no the... i'll just uh, show it huh? that 5 to 7 uh, i have shown no one uh, normal yeah 5 uh, to 7 otherwise also we in anesthesia we used to do like that only no in- yeah 5 to 7 you said uh, there it is it is psco2 minus etco2 but uh, where is f what is f i want to know if it is the uh, uh, you said some books are showing you just identify and put it yes yes I'll just next time i'll tell you yeah. shikant uh, have any idea about that 
అంటే ఎఫ్ అంటే మాత్రం అది వాల్యూమే సార్ డెఫినెట్ గా అంటే ఇట్స్ ఎఫ్ ఓటు కూడా ఉంటుంది సార్ fraction of expired oxygen fraction of expired oh. carbon dioxide okay but it is to... fraction how will you calculate ah adi telli sachu chodal nen kuda but i meaning i know but uh, how it is calculated i have to say yeah because we know that fractional uh, inspired fractional expired this thing but uh, this Same fraction how do you calculate the uh, monitor will calculate or we have to calculate and see madam we just uh, yes yes next time i Uh, at least put in the group yes yes thank you madam uh, very good presentation uh, it must be useful in icu and in anesthesia better to use you have mentioned the first slide itself yes anesthesia yes i will show you again it is mandatory anesthesia even in critical care also you said 70% of the you showed something no is uh, uh, 70% of the um uh, uh, i uh, increase the mortality undetected it got undetected yeah yeah so that itself is indicates uh, that it is uh, necessary uh, next uh, this one is yeah, the next id uh, value to use capnography in patient depend on the artificial airway contribute to more than 70% in icu related deaths the very uh, but, uh, but even though we are not monitoring etc what in our icus maybe western gut is there is for all uh, intubated patients better it to is increase even the... in non intubated patients also we should use huh even in non intubated patients any artificial airway we should use uh, even in intubated and non intubated even patients on mask also they say it should be we should use because unnecessarily no. we are giving more oxygen for many patients actually here artificial airway means ET tube only, no? ET tube or Even subglottic mass, something else. Uh, I don't think mask, uh, nasal box will come under artificial airway. Hmm. Ante kada? Ante ante. Artificial airway, subglottic. Ah, yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, madam. Thank you okay, very thank much you, for your nice you. presentation. Thank you all for your active participation. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Now, next time, need a మంజుల థ్యాంక్ యూ డేవిడ్ సార్ థ్యాంక్ యూ అండ్ రాధా